Morning, Coach. Good morning. We'll get started with Bo and then Jeff. Hey, Coach. Um, you know, there's a lot of curiosity, obviously, about what the offensive line is going to look like on Sunday. I'm wondering if you could just sort of explain to us the process of what it's like early in the week, deciding, you know, how you're going to go about that, you know, uh, when you decide those things and, and what those conversations are like. Well, you know, we, we the, the way the process works is, you know, we, we come out of the, the previous game uh, with a medical report on everybody on the team. And we have to decide, you know, early in the week how, how we're going to construct, you know, the roster uh, for the upcoming opponent. So, you know, that starts Monday, Tuesday. And then by Wednesday, we have a little bit of a feel for, you know, who's going to practice, who's going to be in, who's going to be out, who's going to take a – uh, a rest day, who we think can play, uh, but it may take him a couple days to, to heal up. You know, so all that's kind of the process that we go through um, as we construct, you know, the offensive line, the D-line, the secondary, whoever it might be, whatever position group it might be. Um, and, then, and then we make those final determinations, you know, later in the week. Today is a big day uh, to see more guys practice today. As you guys know, um, you know, we need to see guys on Friday, um, and, and we need to see them full speed, you know, in order to make the final <clears throat> uh, determinations uh, for, for game day. We'll go to Jeff and then Kristen. Uh, Doug, on Wednesday, you said that uh, Alshon Jeffrey um, was day-to-day -day with the calf injury, but he hasn't been practicing this week. So how, how did he injure his calf, and what, what, what are you looking at? I mean, what's the timetable for him now? Well, I'm not necessarily sure specific. It was in practice, um, I guess, two weeks ago, you know, before the third. We had a Thursday game, so he didn't do much last week. But um, I believe it, you know, injured it in practice. Not sure specifically what play or when it was. But, um, you know, listen, we got we got a little time with the bye coming up. And, um, you know, listen, I'm, I'm optimistic now moving forward, especially after the bye. So hopefully we get some guys back, and he's one of them. If I, if I may follow up real quickly, uh, you mentioned on Wednesday how like sometimes when guys are coming back from injuries like he was coming back, you have you have these additional injuries. And I'm just wondering what, why wasn't that taken into account when you guys activated him before the season? This is now eight games that he won't play, and then we're talking into November that he wasn't ready. That's a that's a roster spot. Have you uh, – what have you uh, – well, I mean, Jeff, why Jeff, have you guys wasted a roster I've, spot? Yeah, no, Jeff, I've, I've answered this question before about three, four weeks ago on these guys – Listen, before the season started, we were optimistic that that he was going to play somewhere week four, week five. I, I, you know, listen, I'm, you know, I would have loved to have had him, you know, have him played, you know, against San Francisco or Pittsburgh or something. But it just wasn't, just wasn't there. And and so, I'm not going to go back and, you know, say what if. I mean, those are all hypothetical scenarios. But we are where we are right now today with him and, and he's getting, he is getting better and he's getting healthy. And, and I'm, like I said, I'm optimistic. I'm, you know, we, we've got this game and then we got to buy and then, you know, eight more football games. So um, we got a lot of guys, you know, uh, in, 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 in situations where we hope to get them back here in the second half of the season. Go ahead, Kristen. And then Tim. Good morning, Doug. More and more, it seems like the Cowboys are going to make it Ben Genucci as their starting quarterback this week, although it's, you know, not official as of now. I'm curious the challenge, again, that that uh, presents for you guys. You have limited game fill on him. I mean, he is a rookie, but but what kind of challenge can that pr present for you guys not having that extensive background this week? Well, it's just the unknown. Um, you know, you have to kind of go back and study a little bit of his college film and, and, and then and – then, because we don't have preseason games, right? We don't have the – the, the luxury of watching preseason snaps to see how he, um, you know, moves in the pocket, how his decision-making is, things of that nature, um, and just have a, a, few, a few plays from, from last weekend to, to go off of. But, you know, you, you, you just can't, you can't focus on that one guy. you got to make sure you do your job defensively. Uh, obviously, we know they've got a lot of weapons on the perimeter. Uh, they got a dynamic – they really have a couple, couple really good running backs uh, down there, and, and they're getting some offensive line guys healthy. So – um, you know, it's, it's a matter of if it's Danucci, I think he's, I think he's going to be a guy that's going to, you know, come in, he's going to execute the offense. He's going to execute the plays called and, and he's going to drive the, drive the ship, so to speak. And, you know, uh, um, like you, um, you know, they haven't made a determination yet on Andy Dalton. And a lot of times when guys are in the protocol, it takes to Friday or Saturday before, 
you know, before they're cleared. So we'll, we'll see what happens uh, today. But, um, you know, we, we just got to get, get ready for, for the entire football team coming in here, you know, Sunday night. Tim and then Dave. Hey, Doug, one uh, topic of conversation this week has been about Jordan Maialata and uh, the concern about moving him off of left tackle when he's just starting to kind of get into a groove where you have to kind of evaluate that position big picture versus putting in a, a 30 38- 38 year old Jason Peters who won't be with the team long term. Where do you come down on that? Uh, how do you kind of weigh those things when when making determinations like that at left tackle? Well, I mean, I wish I had Andre Dillard and Brandon Brooks and Isaac Ciamalo too. Um, you know, and, and that makes it, that makes a big difference there. But uh, you know, listen, we're gonna we're gonna make we're gonna make the best decision for the football team moving forward. Jordan Jordan has played well. Um, and, and and sometimes I'll say this I, I I lean I go back to you know uh, Nelson Aguilar a few years ago and and you know uh, op- opportunity for him to kind of see big picture himself and and then it is listen don't don't Tim don't under, don't don't take me wrong here I love where Jordan's at I love where his growth is right but at the same time sometimes uh, if Jason Peters starts at left tackle it it, it allows Jordan to see big picture as well. Uh, and kind of step back and 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 observe that way, um, and sometimes that helps young players too. But whatever the decision is there at left tackle, um, you know, and, and really in the whole offensive line, you know, these guys are prepared. They're excited. They're ready to go. And and uh, again, we're playing a really good front, and it's going to take all those guys to to put up a good performance. All right, Dave, and then Les. Hey, Doug, with Lane, I know he has the knee injury and the ankle injury. Is one of those the one that might hold him back more than the other? And what do you need to see from him today to, to get a sense of whether or not he'll be able to play? Um, you know, just, just for him to get out there and just uh, execute the game plan today. Um, you know, see him see him run around. And, and he, he's been feeling good. He's, you know, he's had a, cu- a couple good uh, days where he's, you know, done more rehab than, than, than anything. And, and, um, but, but just being out there today, you know, and being with his teammates and, and executing our game plan today on Friday, the, you know, the red zone goes in today and seeing, seeing how he moves around. Is that knee or the ankle? I mean, is one of those more significant than the other at this point? Not really. No. We're going to lessen than Jamie. Hi, Doug. Uh, when you were talking about Jason Peters on Wednesday, you mentioned wanting to see him out there, see him move around before you decided, you know, where he would fit in. What have you seen? You've had a couple of days of practice. How does he look? Um, he looks he looks good. He, he, he you know he feels good. I, I, I think the the couple of days of practice this week, you know, and that's the thing with with players coming off an of injury, putting them back in practice and then seeing how they react the next day. So practice Wednesday, how do they react on Thursday and, and, and Thursday into Friday? And, you know, he, he's held up, he's held up well, he's, he's done a nice job out there. Um, you know, as far as the, you know, the terminology, I mean, obviously nothing's, nothing's really changed from that standpoint. He's picked that up, but uh, I thought he's had a good week of uh, preparation so far. Thank you. Jamie and then Zach. Doug, uh, what does the Cowboys rivalry mean to you? I mean, I know that this year is different given that you guys are both coming in with two wins. That's not a normal situation, but, but how did, does that change anything? And is this still the rivalry that it always has been? Yeah. You know, I think, I think the rivalry is always, it, it, it's, it's always one of the, one of the, the great rivalries in, in, in football. And um, listen, both teams could be sitting here, you know, six and zero, oh, and it, 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 it would still mean a lot we're sitting here with two wins apiece and it still means a lot. And, you know, that's the thing about the NFC East. It doesn't matter who you're playing and your, your opponents, whether, whether one team's banged up, the other team's not, or vice versa, or both teams are banged up, you know, both teams are coming in here and they're going to play hard and, and both teams want to win. And, um, it's a great rivalry. I, I, I remember my days back in the vet when, um, you know, many of you were writing, writing about us then. And, and uh, that rivalry, how how important it is to the to the, not only to to both cities, but obviously the city of Philadelphia and the fans, and and um, you know, and so it's it's very important. And uh, our guys understand that uh, as we as we prepare for these these types of weeks. Zach, and then John. Hey Doug, in your time here, you've been mostly eleven personnel, twelve personnel. I assume your uh, depth chart had a lot to do with that as 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 well. But as a play caller, what do you think of 
of four wides or empty? And is, is that something you are opposed to if you're deeper at wide receiver? Well, you saw a little four wides last week, um, you know, four receivers on the field. And, you know, I, I do like it. I do like if you have if you have the four guys, I, I, I think it's a great change up. Right. Uh, but but I also have to take into consideration who who the pass rushers are to who, who those edge rushers are. Right. The defensive ends. And even sometimes your your inside guys, because defensive fronts are different today. Um, you know, they can they can man up on on each one of your offensive linemen and, and put pressure and stuff like that. So it, it kind of forces you to get the ball out of your hand a little bit quicker than having a back or a tight end, you know, in protection uh, as well. So I like it. I think it's a good change up. I think it's a good tempo, uh, a way to go tempo, way to go fast. Um, and and I think I think we're getting closer to, to being able to do that a little bit more. John and then Ed Kratz. Hey, Doug. Uh, with Nate Herbig, what, what about him? He started at right guard, moved to left guard, back to right guard, now might be back again. What, what makes you and Stout so comfortable uh, with his ability to move to either side? I tell you, he, he, honestly, he's, he's a smart kid. Um, and and um, it doesn't take – he doesn't – you know, he doesn't need a ton of work, you know, going from right to left, right? I mean, he, it's, 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 I would say it's pretty natural for him. There are some guys though, that, that you, you got to just say, Hey, you're the left guard or maybe you're the right guard, but this guy um, can play both and he plays it. Uh, it's not perfect, but he plays it, um, you know, um, I want to say easily, but it's, it's never an easy position to play, but uh, he handles it well. And again, it's, he's smart. He understands the information. He knows, you know, he knows how to surface blocks, being on the right side, being on the left side, and and um, you know something that, you know, as he came into the season, he, he as you guys know, he was going to be a you know a, a backup player for us, a role player, and a guy that could swing from left to right. So uh, that's that's how we were cross training him, you know, prior to uh, coming into this season. Well, we got time for two more, so Ed and then Mike. Hey Doug, uh, you are getting healthier as a team, you know getting Rager back probably Sunday and then, you know, maybe Ertz and Miles at some point. How much does that factor in the health of getting the roster back together uh, into the trade deadline decisions, um, you know, with that deadline coming up Tuesday? Yeah, I mean, I just think it's so important for us. You know, um, like I said, if we can just kind of hang on here, you know, and and, and keep things together and, um, you know, keep battling, keep fighting the way the guys have. And, and we know we got around the corner, got some – of our starters that are, that are coming back. And that, that's, that's exciting looking forward. But, um, you know, until that time, we got to keep coaching the guys we have and the guys that are playing for us because they're, they're battling their tails off right now. Um, and, and as far as the, you know, the trade deadline goes, I mean, you know, I, I don't focus too much on that as much as just getting the team ready to play. And, and uh, knowing that, again, we got, we got some guys that are, that are getting healthy and, and, and should return soon. Go ahead, Mike. With that said, I was just curious, uh, what's the update on Malik Jackson? Um, and do you expect TJ Edwards, Jason Peters, and Jalen Rager to play this week and maybe even Dallas Goddard? Yeah, you know, really, and, and, and this statement kind of blankets all those guys. It kind of covers all those guys. that they, They've all practiced this week. They've all had good weeks um, or a good week of preparation so far. And look, we got to we got to get through today. Uh, we got to make sure there's no setbacks today out at practice, and and um, you know we still want to push them and 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 make sure that they can uh, they can handle the um, you know the, the the strains of of a game. And and once we get through today, uh, we'll have a better picture and a better sense of of who will be available Sunday. Thanks, coach. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, guys.